going to be present on Haskell, or is it Haskell? Haskell. It's Haskell. I guess. Haskell. And he's going to start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, the countdown is very nerve-wracking. But So I've been playing around with Haskell on and off for something like four years and not really written anything productive in it, but it's fun, it's fun to play with. Are you getting this? There is no, yep. there are no. no speakers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's just for fun, like, like my playing with Haskell. And reasons, reasons it's interesting is it's a purely functional language. Functional languages are cool these days. It's statically typed, which is a nice contrast from when I'm working with Python, which is still 90% of my time. Um, white space counts, which is nice coming over from Python. This is the Hello World program. And I want to jump right into talking about the stuff you can do with Haskell. Um, an example of type classes here. Um, this, is, this is where you basically announce that your type is now an instance of another type, and if you include in that declaration the definitions of a couple of functions, then you can use it that in the, any place you use that type and get through the notorious static type checking. So this is an example of defining a month type and then defining a cycle so that when you ask for the month after December, you get January, and if you ask for the month before January, you get December. And in all other cases, you just go on to the next month with the built-in successor and uh, predecessor functions. And this is also an example of the uh, pattern matching that Haskell people like to use for their function definitions, where you just say, this, this is the function name, this is a very specific argument, same function name, more general argument. As long as you have something general enough to capture everything, your compiler is happy. And monads are kind of a, first of all, they're an example of a type class. Second of all, they're kind of a running gag in the online Haskell community at this point because everybody likes to come up with these sophomoric analogies for what a monad is in real life. And the, the, fa the favorite is a burrito because, oh, I'm, I'm wrapping something up in this new type, just like wrapping up a burrito. And the, of course, the mathematicians are wondering what, why everybody's so confused. But I wanted to just go through it from the bottom up. Um, this is just an example of a type class definition. There are four functions to define. One of them is actually implicitly defined in terms of the others. And if you just look at the way these are implemented, you can actually figure out pretty easily what, what these mysterious monads are doing. Unless, of course, you start by looking at the I.O. monad, which everybody looks at, which is a horrible mistake because the I.O. monad is implemented deep inside the Haskell compiler or the Haskell interpreter and you have to at least have some expertise before you can even read the definition of, or the, the implementation of IO inside of the, the GHC Haskell compiler or some other smaller compiler. And that's why the implementation is not shown on this slide. So, of course, everybody gets sucked into it because they want to print hello world and you have to do output to print hello world so they start with what's on their screen after that first exercise and get lost. Uh, I wanted to talk about this from a much, much simpler monad, the may maybe monad, which is kind of, it's a different way of doing null types or not a number types, uh, things that you would do in Python with none. And here you declare that maybe is an instance of monad because if you're given uh, the nothing version of maybe, 
and you're trying to do something else after it, you always get nothing. Otherwise, you get the, the something else you're doing. And the others are um, as trivial as, as they can be, I think, I hope. Okay. So how this works, uh, using that month type class I defined before, I, I can do things like if I give it a nothing value and uh, return the month that comes after nothing, then I get nothing in my output. Whereas if I get, if I re ask for the, if I say that my uh, maybe month is just December, then I actually get just January with this. Uh, this is a uh, type class constructor that's also your your label for what type class you are when you're um, printing output if you happen to automatic if you explicitly or automatically define this show function which uh, is actually another type class and just promises that there's a show function that prints a string of your type and the thing to understand here is I, I did this in this uh, do notation where you do one thing and then you do the next thing to it. This is actually all defined in terms of the sequence and bind functions that were the, the things you have to define when you define the Haskell type class. And the thing I'm leading up to here is that lists are also monads. I won't go through the, the, the meanings of all these, but basically you're applying a map and then flattening your list. The reason you do all this, finally getting to something a Python programmer might recognize, is that you can define uh, from the bottom up these um, list comprehensions in almost the same syntax as Python. And what I want to show you is that just as it's syntactic sugar in Python, or almost syntactic sugar, it's just syntactic sugar in Haskell when you do the same thing. Time. And, yeah.